Good morning, everybody. Just got my first pot of coffee out of the way. And uh, we got those beaver traps we're gonna go check. And then uh, I wanna go check some trail cameras up here over the food plot and see if uh, Oldie and Goofy are still holding their horns. And uh, we got some dreadful news for everybody. I'm still kicking myself. Uh, I did a terrible thing. And I'm embarrassed to even say it. I missed two coyotes last night. How? I don't know, but I did. I called two coyotes out from the bottom down here last night and they came out right uh, on that hedgerow of uh, Brian's out there. And there's two of them and I waited for the two to line up. They were at about 440 yards is what I figure them at out there, which isn't a problem for my 6.5, that's really, not a hard shot with that gun. That thing is just a shooter. I mean, that it's it shoots true. When I miss, it certainly isn't that gun's fault or that setup's fault. So I waited till they lined right up and I held on the top coyote thinking, well, if it's a little farther than I thought, because it's hard to judge distance at night, but I have everything marked in my head out here. As Soon as I see something out here, that yardage comes into my head automatically. Uh, I waited till they lined right up. I pulled the trigger. They both took off running. And I lined the next one up right up there on the very top point of Brian's uh, heifer pasture. And uh, I knew that was a little over 500 yards. So I gave it, I'd say about 18 inches. I held high and uh, shot. And the coyote took off running. So. It's a hard pill to swallow. I don't like missing coyotes. It's very hard to get a shot at one and then to, to not capitalize when it happens is really, really, really unfortunate. I feel like uh, just terrible. I'm gonna go look up there to see if there's any blood or anything because I've watched the video, uh, especially of the second shot. The first shot, I can see how I missed. It looks like uh, right when I pulled the trigger that the one coyote was en ended up instead of being perfectly broadside turned a little bit So it was actually facing straight away from me and the one on the left actually turned a little bit to the Left to look straight away from me. So the round I think split them went right in between them right by the one's head So I could see how I missed that one, but the next one at 520 or 530 I think I oh, mean I I should have smoked that thing. I was right where I was um, you know wanting to hold so we're gonna go check on that but let's go check these beaver traps we'll go check on those coyotes and then we got some trail cameras I want to check out so let's go do it You stay. Hey, you gotta stay. You stay. You hear me? You stay. You stay. Oh. 
others. No action on the first set. There's raccoon tracks right through here and deer tracks going through there. Let's see what we got over here. Well, something happened over here. We nailed the beaver, everybody. We got one. Where's my wire? Attached to that. Wow, pretty big one too. Really. Perfect. I had a perfect head catch on him. Perfect. are tough. since I said 3.30. Good looking beaver. Oh, I bet you there's another one in here, so we'll go ahead and get this trap reset right in the same spot. Take out another one. In New York State, I mentioned it on the last video, but if you didn't watch it, you have to have that uh, trigger offset. You gotta have six inches right here uh, so you uh, don't catch non-target critters like otters and stuff, even though I really don't think it changes much. I think you still catch stuff that, you know, you'll still catch some, some non-target critters no matter what, but that's just a typical New York State rule. They got lots of them. Almost so many you can't even keep up with them every year. But I'm never trying to do anything wrong. Let's go ahead and get this back in here. These eight stands are really useful for me. I like them. Just like that. And then we'll get some sticks going across there. I want to use dead ones so they dive under. Just like that. Or 
there's a dead one. Okay, should be all set to catch another one. I can tell you got out of the gator, girl. That was a bad dog, I told you to stay. I tell you to stay, I mean stay, not get out of there, okay? I think right in here was my first shot at those coyotes. I don't see any sign of any hit for sure. And then they took off running this way and my next shot was right up on the fence line up there. Here's where my round hit. You can see it's kind of uh, melted out right now, but that's definitely where that round impacted. Just like that. I think my next shot was right right in this area somewhere. I don't see any blood or anything. There's a big fresh coyote track right there. Right through there. Well, you want to be a coyote dog? You want to be a coyote dog? Huh, look at that. Actually, some of that coyote's hair right there. Unless that's, I don't think that's scout's hair. I'll go ahead and check this camera. There used to be a big scrape right here. See what's on it. There's Oldie, front and center. There's a 
big spike. I saw him out there a few different times this year. There's that little two and a half year old seven point. He's pretty much all over the place. There's a spike. Four point. There's Oldie. That was on the 24th. He walked right through there. There's a shed buck. Shed one side. Well, nothing too exciting on there. A couple pictures of Oldie and that two and a half year old. And... Oh, got covered in snow, it looks like. There it goes. There's that really cool buck. That's going to be a really unique buck next year. He's a, a two and a half year old eight point, but he's super palmated. Tell it's just a young deer. Going to be really cool next year to see what he looks like. There's that two and a half year old seven point. There's that big three point. I had him right on top of me during archery season a few times. There's me on the snowmobile making my rounds. There's uh, that buck that I call Paul. He's actually a deer that spent a lot of time with Big Brow across the road. He summered with Big Brow over on the neighbors. And now he's over on our side in the food.
Paul made it eight point. Just coming in to check this camera right here and looks like the scrape like just got tore up. Yeah, that got tore up not too long ago by the looks of it. Boy, this cornfield, these deer have been just absolutely slamming this. Wow. Okay, everybody, we're uh, right back here on the edge of this fence line where them coyotes have been coming up and down their tracks or Those are deer uh, There's fresh coyote tracks right up here uh, This is where I shot at them the other night from the house and unfortunately missed but we're gonna set a few traps here, a few dirt hole sets. Uh, we got, looks like a whole week without snow. So if there's ever a time to do it, this time of year, right now, we're gonna take, right here there's a hedgerow that goes up through this field and uh, a little pinch point, and I think they've been running through here. We're gonna set one right there at that clump of grass and then possibly uh, trying to think where we I'll put another one maybe right over there on the other side or further down the fence line here we'll see what I decide but let's go ahead and pound a few in here
Okay, so we got the first set in place here. Uh, the next one I'll maybe explain what I'm doing throughout setting it. So you guys, if you guys have any questions, hopefully I can answer them, you know, while I'm actually setting it. But I'm gonna set a trail camera up right here and see uh, if we can catch what's going on here at the set. Put it a little ways away. Okay, we got a camera set up on it. We'll see what happens here. Let's go set another one. Okay, the next one we'll set right here. We got uh, that coyote from last night went right through here running that way. I'd like to put it closer to the fence, but it's still pretty snowy over there and I'd rather put it where it's pretty well melted. And pretty much whenever I look for a set, I want to find something a little distinct or something that sticks up a little more than everything else, which would be this grass clump right here. That would be a spot that if a coyote was coming through here, they might go over here to mark that and uh, pay that special attention. So that's why we're gonna put the set right here. And we're actually gonna put it on the high side, on this side of it. So, let's go ahead and get it set. Okay, so I just uh, cut my trap bed out of here. And I normally make the trap bed a little smaller than the actual trap or right on it so I can kind of pinch those edges in and really steady that trap. These are for the springs to go down so we have room for that. And I'm gonna line the bottom of this with peat moss. Supposedly it, it's uh, less likely to freeze hard to the ground even though peat moss freezes just as hard as, you know, normal dirt in my opinion sometimes, but this is how the pros do it, so I try to mimic people that are successful. 
and then I just, this is just a guide hole. That hurt. I put this down first just to guide my other stake in. that out. We'll go ahead and put this in. good twist and pull make sure we get that set not going anywhere Okay, so I have the trap bedded and I have it super steady with those sides. I want to make sure these uh, you want to make sure those can spring up just fine, just like that. Now I'm going to cut these really thin. I don't want them long. I want them uh, really nice and short so when this goes off, you know they can't get caught.
and then I usually scruff stuff up right around where I set the trap so everything's kind of uniform. I don't like certain stuff being uh, packed down and uh, uniform looking when everything else isn't. So that's kind of why I do that. I don't really know if that makes a big difference or not, but it makes me feel better about it. And then I'll take this, just kind of put all over the place to kind of make them think that, you know, there's a little different smell, not just where the trap is, but it's everywhere. And I think that'll make them a little bit more comfortable in the area. You know, if there's a different smell, it's everywhere and not just, you know, where the trap is with that peat moss. Again, that's not something that, I don't know if it really makes any difference or not, but it makes me feel better about it. These coyotes are tricky buggers. Everything's gotta be about perfect. Unfortunately on that one, I don't think we're gonna be able to get a, a camera on it, but we've got two traps in. Hopefully we nail ourselves one of these coyotes. Right here, right there. We'll see. Now it'll be fun. It's fun to set a few traps and we'll keep an eye on them. Fingers crossed.